हे एवरी वन टेक आउट योर बुक्स एंड स्टार्ट रीडिंग विद मी फर्स्ट वी हैव चैप्टर वन फॉर्मेशन ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट मीन्स एन एग्रीमेंट विच इज़ एनफोर्सिबल बाई लो एन एग्रीमेंट कंसिस्ट ऑफ रेसिप्लोकल प्रोमिस बिटवीन द टू पार्टीज इन केस ऑफ अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट ईच पार्टी इज लीगली बाउंड बाय द प्रोमिस मेड बाय हिम a contract or an obligation to perform improvements may arise in the following way first by an agreement and contract second by standard form contract third by promissory estoppel first agreement and contract the most common way of making a contract is through an agreement the two parties may agree to something through mutual negotiations when one party makes an offer and other accepts the same there arises an agreement which may be enforceable by law second standard form contracts in the modern age some persons institutions or establishments such as railways insurance companies banks manufacturers of various goods etc may have to enter into a large number of contracts with thousands of person they cannot possibly negotiate individually with the persons with whom the contracts are to be made contracts with pre-drafted matters are generally prepared by one party which the other has to agree as a general rule such standard form contracts are as much valid as those entered into through due negotiations different situations and problems arise in such contracts have been discussed here under third we have promissory estoppel sometimes there may be no agreement and contract in strict sense of the term but a person making a promise may become bound because of application of equitable doctrine of estoppel the above mentioned modes of creating contractual obligations obligations are being discussed below first agreement and contract contract according to section 2 sub clause at Uh, clause h of indian contract act 1872 an agreement enforceable by law is a contract all agreements are not enforceable by law and therefore all agreements are not contracts some agreements may be enforceable by law and others not for example an agreement to sell a radio set may be a contract but an agreement to go to see a movie may be a mere agreement not enforceable by law thus All agreements are not contracts only those agreements which satisfy the essential conditions in section 10 of Indian Contract Act become contracts however all contracts are agreement agreement according to section 2 clause e every promise and every set of promises forming consideration for each other is an agreement in an agreement there is a promise from both sides For example A promises to deliver his watch to B and in return B promises to pay a sum of rupees 2000 to A This is said to be an agreement between A and B A promise is a result of an offer by one person and its acceptance by the other For example when A makes a proposal to sell his watch to B for rupees 2000 and B accepts his proposal there results a promise between two persons section 2b of the act 1872 defines promise as under when the person to whom the proposal is made signifies his assent thereto the proposal is said to be accepted a proposal when accepted becomes a promise thus when there is a proposal from one side and the acceptance of that proposal from other side it results in a promise this promise from the two parties to one another is known as an agreement it has been noted above that an agreement enforceable by law is a contract all such agreements which satisfy the condition mentioned in section 10 of the act 1872 are contracts section 10 is as under all agreements are contracts if they are made by the free consent of parties competent to contract for a lawful consideration and with a lawful object and not hereby expressly declared to be void 
the essentials needed for a valid contract therefore are as under an agreement between the two parties an agreement is the result of a proposal or an offer by one party followed by its acceptance by the other agreement should be between the parties who are competent to contract third there should be a lawful consideration and lawful object in respect of that agreement there should be free consent of the parties when they enter into the agreement the agreement must not be one which has been expressly declared to be void from the point of view of the legality there are different types of agreement first now we read contract according to section 2h of the act 1872 contract is an agreement which is enforceable by law it is an agreement or set of promises giving rise to obligations which can be enforced or are recognized by law it has been noted above that in order that an agreement becomes a contract it has to satisfy all the essential conditions of a valid contract as mentioned in section 10 classification of contracts contracts may be classified according to their subject matter their parties their form whether contained in deed in writing whether express or implied their effect whether by literal or unilateral whether valid void or enforceable section 2h of contract act provides that an agreement enforceable by law is an agreement and becomes void when it ceases to be enforceable section 10 enumerates the ingredients of a contract it provides that all agreements are the contracts if they are made by the free consent of parties competent to contract for a lawful consideration and with a lawful object and are not hereby expressly declared to be void it is also made clear that this will not affect any law in force and not expressly repealed by the contract act by which a contract is required to be made in writing or in presence of witnesses or any law relating to the registration of documents some of the contracts which have to be reduced to writing are the contracts mentioned in section 25 of the contract act evidently before a contract will be enforced it is essential that the terms of contract must be clear definite certain and complete and the contract must be free from doubt vagueness and ambiguity so as to leave nothing to conjecture or to be supplied by the court Lord Hoffman in Investors Compensation Scheme Limited versus Bruce Bromwich Building Society has summarized five principles of interpretation of contracts they are as follows first interpretation is the ascertainment of the meaning which the document would convey to a reasonable person having all the background knowledge second the background means matrix of fact third the law excludes from admissible background the previous negotiations of the parties and the declarations of subjective intent fourth the meaning which document or an other utterance would convey to a reasonable man is not the same thing as the meaning of its words the rule that words should be given their natural and ordinary meaning reflects the common sense proposition that is not easily acceptable that people have made linguistic mistakes particularly to formal documents in bp refinery western port pitwa limited versus share of hastings the privy council has laid down five conditions which are to be satisfied for an implied terms of contract these are it must be reasonable and equitable it must be necessary to give business efficacy to the contract it must be so obvious that it goes without saying it must be capable of clear expression it 
must not contradict any express term of the contract so basically every contract involves four elements these are first competence of the parties second consensus third consideration and object and fourth certainty agreement of sale executed by vendor and not purchaser is valid an agreement of sale comes into existence when the vendor agrees to sell and the purchaser agrees to purchase for an agreed consideration on agreed terms it can be oral it can be by exchange of communications which may or may not be signed it may be by single document signed by both parties it can also be by document in two parts each party signing one copy and then exchanging the signed copy as a consequence of which the purchaser has the copy signed by the vendor and the vendor has a copy signed by the purchaser or it can be by the vendor executing the document and delivering it to the purchaser who accepts it therefore even an oral agreement to sell is valid if so a written agreement signed by one of the parties if its evidence is such an oral agreement will also be valid in an agreement of sale the terms are always negotiated and thereafter reduced in the form of an agreement of sale and signed by both parties or the vendor alone unless it is by a series of offers and counter offers by letters or other modes of recognized communication in india an agreement of sale signed by vendor alone and delivered to the purchaser and accepted by the purchaser has always been considered to be specifically enforced by the is always considered to be a valid contract in the event of breach of vendor it can be specifically enforced by the purchaser there is however no practice of purchaser alone signing an agreement of sale even though the draftsman who prepared the agreement might have used a format intended for execution by both vendor and purchaser the manner in which the party had proceeded clearly demonstrated that it was intended to be executed only by the vendor alone thus the agreement of sale signed by signed only by the vendor was valid and enforceable by the purchaser void agreements according to section 2g of the act 1872 an agreement not enforceable by law is said to be void for instance an agreement by a minor a minor has been held to be void section 24 to 30 of indian contract act makes a specific mention of agreements which are void those agreements include an agreement without consideration an agreement in restraint of marriage an agreement in restraint of trade third voidable contracts according to section 2i of the act 1872 an agreement which is enforceable by law at the option of one or more of the parties there to but not at the option of other is a voidable contract thus a voidable contract is one which could be avoided by one of the parties to the contract at his option if such a party does not avoid the contract the contract remains valid but if it prefers to avoid the contract then the contract becomes void for instance when the consent of a party to a contract has been obtained by coercion and influence fraud misrepresentation the contract is voidable at the option of the party whose consent has been so obtained once an innocent party exercises the option and rescinds the contract the contract becomes void void agreement and voidable contract distinguish A void agreement is a nullity from its inception, and no rights accrue to any party thereto, or is transferred, etc. A voidable contract, on the other hand, is a contract which can be avoided by one of the parties thereto. Such a contract remains valid until it has been avoided, but becomes void only if and when it is avoided. until such a contract has been avoided rights may accrue in favor of the parties to the contract or their transferees 
ಎಟ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ಇಲ್ಲೀಗಲ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ರ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಸರ್ಟೇನ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ಲೀಗಲ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಲೂ ಫಾರ್ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದ ವೆರಿ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಟ್ ದ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಂಟೆಂಪ್ಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಎನ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಟು ಕಮಿಟ್ ಅ ಕ್ರೈಮ್ ಅ ಟಾಟ್ ಓರ್ ಎನ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಟೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಟು ಕರಪ್ಟ್ ಪಬ್ಲಿಕ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಓರ್ ಎನ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಟು ಡಿಫ್ರೋಡ್ ಪಬ್ಲಿಕ್ ರೆವೆನ್ಯೂ ಇಸ್ ಇಲ್ಲೀಗಲ್ ಸಚ್ ಎನ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಪೆಟೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಅಪೋಸ್ ಟು ಪಬ್ಲಿಕ್ ಪಾಲಿಸಿ ದ ಲಾ ಫಾರ್ಬಿಡ್ಸ್ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಚ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಎನ್ ಇಲ್ಲೀಗಲ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಡಿಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ವಿಷ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಮಿಯರ್ ಅವಾಯ್ಡ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಮೇ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಅಪೋಸ್ ಟು ಪಬ್ಲಿಕ್ ಪಾಲಿಸಿ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಎನ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಟು ಡೂ ಎನ್ ಇಂಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವಾಯ್ಡ್ ಓಲ್ ಡೂ ದೇ ಮೇ ದೇ ಮೇ ಬಿ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ದೇರ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಸಚ್ ಎನ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಪೋಸ್ ಟು ಪಬ್ಲಿಕ್ ಪಾಲಿಸಿ ದ ಲೋ ಡಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಫಾರ್ಬಿಡ್ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಚ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಓಲ್ ದೋ ಇಫ್ ಇಫ್ ದ ಪಾರ್ಟೀಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಮೇಡ್ ಸಚ್ ಎನ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಎನ್ಫೋರ್ಸಿಯೇಬಲ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ಕಾನ್ ಕೋರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಾ ವೆದರ್ ಎನ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಟರ್ಮ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಇಲ್ಲೀಗಲ್ ಓರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಮೇ ಡಿಪೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಡಿಗ್ರಿ ಟು ವಿಚ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಪೋಸ್ ಟು ಪಬ್ಲಿಕ್ ಪಾಲಿಸಿ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಎನ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ರಿಸ್ಟ್ರೇಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಟ್ರೇಡ್ ಇಸ್ ವೈಡ್ ಬಟ್ ವಿ ವಿ ಬಟ್ ವಿ ಮೇ ನಾಟ್ ಟರ್ಮ್ ಇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಎನ್ ಇಲ್ಲೀಗಲ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ವಿ ಡೂ ವೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಎನ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಟು ಕಮಿಟ್ ಅ ಕ್ರೈಮ್ ಎನ್ ಇಲ್ಲೀಗಲ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಫಾರ್ಬಿಡನ್ ಬೈ ಲೋ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ವರ್ಡ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಟು ಡಿಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ವಿಷ್ ಎನ್ ಇಲ್ಲೀಗಲ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಅದರ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟೆಡ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ವೈಲ್ ಇನ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ವರ್ಡ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಅ ಕೋಲೇಟ್ರಲ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸಾಕ್ಷನ್ ಮೇ ನಾಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಬಿ ವರ್ಡ್ ಬಟ್ ಇನ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಎನ್ ಇಲ್ಲೀಗಲ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ದ ಕೋಲೇಟ್ರಲ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸಾಕ್ಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಹೆಲ್ಡ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಎ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ಮನಿ ಟು ಬಿ ಟು ಎನೇಬಲ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಟು ಪೇ ಹಿಸ್ ವೇಜರಿಂಗ್ ಡೆಟ್ ದ ವೇಜರ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಮೇನ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸಾಕ್ಷನ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಬಟ್ ಲೋನ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಬೈ ಎ ಇಸ್ ಸಬ್ಸಿಡ್ರಿ ಟು ಇಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ರಿಕವರ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಮನಿ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಬಿ ಆನ್ ದ ಅದರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ವೆನ್ ಎ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ಲೋನ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಟು ಸ್ಮಗಲ್ ಗುಡ್ಸ್ smuggling is the main transaction and loan is subsidiary to it but loan transaction is also said to be tainted with the same illegal illegality and a will not be able to recover his money the agreement offer and acceptance it has been noted above that an agreement between the parties is one of the essential elements for creating a contract an agreement arises by an offer or proposal by one of the parties and the acceptance of such offer by the other the rule regarding proposal and acceptance are being discussed below proposal or offer the term proposal has been defined in section 2a of the indian contract act 1872 as follows when one person signifies to another his willingness to do or to abstain from doing anything with a view to obtaining the assent of that person to such act or abstinence he is said to make a proposal the proposal used in contract uh, indian contract act is synonymous with the term offer used in english law the willingness to do or to abstain from doing anything is doing something that is the proposal or the offer may be made with a view to obtaining the assent of the other party thereto for example a is willingness to sell his radio set to b for rupees 500 if b accepts to purchase the same amounts to proposal by a for the sale of radio set but if a statement is made without an intention to obtain the assent of other party thereto that cannot be termed as proposal offer an invitation to treat offer distinguished a proposal or offer has to be distinguished from an invitation to offer or treat sometimes a person may not offer to sell his goods but make some statement or give some information with the view to inviting the others to make
and the person circulating the catalog has a discretion to accept or not to accept the offer likewise inviting persons to an auction where goods to be auctioned are displayed is not an offer for the sale of goods the offer is made by the intending buyer in the form of bid such an offer that is bid when accepted by the fall of hammer or in some other customary way will result in contract in the same way advertisement calling for tenders is not a proposal or offer but merely an invitation to the contractors for making an offer the submission of a tender is in nature of a offer it will result in a contract only when tender is accepted making the highest bid will not automatically result in contract the contract will arise only when the highest bid is accepted by the competent authority and said acceptance is communicated to the tenderer nobody is bound to accept an offer an auctioneer therefore may not accept even the highest bid an advertisement by the auctioneer to sell goods by an auction being an invitation to treat rather than an offer he does not incur any liability by not accepting the offer which is in the form of bid an auctioneer is even free to cancel an auction sale announced by him in harris versus nickerson the defendant advertised a sale by auction the plaintiff traveled to the advertised place of auction to find the defendant to find that the defendant had cancelled the auction sale he brought an action against the defendant to recover the expenses of his travel it was held that he was not entitled to the same as there there was as yet no contract between the two parties which could make the defendant liable display of goods either in a shop window or inside the shop and such goods bear price tags would not amount to an offer to sell goods at prices mentioned on the price tags it would be an invitation to trade in pharmaceutical society of great britain versus boots cash chemists limited it was held that if an intending buyer was willing to purchase the goods at a price mentioned on the tag he could make an offer to the to buy the goods the shopkeeper had the option to accept the offer or reject the same the contract would arise only when the offer was accepted no customer can force the shopkeeper to sell the goods at the price mentioned on the tag in the instant case the defendants were having the business of retail sale of drugs medicines were displayed on the shelves and their retail prices were indicated they had self service system on entry into the shop a customer was given a wire basket after selecting the articles needed by a customer he could put them in the basket and take them to the cash desk the defendants had put a registered pharmacist near the cash counter who had been authorized to stop a customer removing any drug from the premises it was held that display of articles even on self service basis was not an offer but was merely an invitation to treat when the customer selected an article and brought the same to the cash desk that amounted to an offer to buy the goods the defendant were therefore free to accept the offer or not the following observations of lord godard chief justice are worth nothing i think that is a well established principle that the mere exposure of goods for the sale by the shopkeeper indicates to the public that he is willing to trade but does not amount to an offer to sell i don't think i ought to hold that principle is completely reversed merely because there is a self service scheme such as this in operation in my opinion it comes to no more than that the customer is informed that he may himself pick up an article and bring it to the shopkeeper with a view to buying it and if and if but if the shopkeeper then expresses his willingness to sell the contract for sale is completed in fact the offer is an offer to buy and there is no offer to sell the customer brings the goods to the shopkeeper to see whether he will sell or not in 99 cases out of 100 he will sell and if so he accepts the customer's offer but he need not do so 
the very fact that a supervising pharmacist is at the place where the money has to be paid is an indication to the purchaser that shopkeeper may not be willing to complete a contract with anybody who may bring the goods to him so friends that's all for today we will continue tomorrow thank you keep reading and stay tuned with no legal world to know the legal world thank you